You know, in preparation for doing this Hank Unplugged podcast with you, Joe, I watched a film this morning that's titled Pray Away. And at the very beginning of this film, in caps, it says reparative or conversion therapy is the attempt to change a person's sexual orientation or gender identity by a religious leader, a licensed counselor, or a peer support group. And then it says, again, in all caps, flashed across the screen at the very beginning of the film, all major medical and mental health associations have denounced the practice as harmful. It also notates that approximately 700,000 people have gone through some form of conversion therapy in the U.S. alone, and that a national survey found that the LGBTQ youth who experienced conversion therapy were more than twice as likely to attempt suicide. And then the film is dedicated to those who survived this kind of therapy, and especially those the film says, who did not survive it. The film is about Exodus International. You were involved with Exodus International. And essentially what this film is saying is that the leaders of Exodus had no qualifications and that they were fundamentalists who believed God created the world and that homosexuality is bad. What say you? (laughs) Well, I at least agree with those last few sentences. We did believe and do believe that God created the world. We also believe that God created humanity, that God created humanity with specific intentions, and that homosexuality is not one of those intentions. I believe our anatomy testifies to that. I believe the contrast between men and women testifies to that. And I believe the Word of God strongly testifies to that. Having said all of that, Let me say that wherever you have effective propaganda, you'll have a combination of fear and exaggeration. Just for example, the film conveniently says some 700,000 people have gone through this thing called conversion therapy with no way of really backing those figures up or of doing any sort of assessment to determine whether or not that number of people have gone through such a thing. Secondly, conversion therapy is a very sinister term, isn't it? I mean, it conjures up the idea of a Frankenstein scientist creating some sort of monster or experimenting on people. So let's cut to the chase. As long as there are homosexual people, there will be homosexual people who come to Christ. And as long as there are homosexual people who come to Christ, there will be homosexual people who realize that homosexuality is not God's will. They will want discipling and support and guidance. That's what we provide. I have never met a Christian counselor or a Christian minister or Christian ministry who said the goal is to convert people's sexual desires from gay to straight. Our goal has always been to help people to live faithful lives, part of which will mean resisting desires that would take them outside of God's will. And then when the client has the potential for a response to a member of the opposite sex, and falls in love with someone of the opposite sex and wants to pursue that, of course we would encourage it. And if an individual does not feel attracted to the opposite sex, I would discourage that individual from entering into a marriage. So I think the misrepresentation is huge and grossly unfair. i got to tell you, Hank, I saw a movie like this a few years back called Boy He Raised, and its portrayal of a ministry like mine was so so harrowing. My gosh, in this film, the people in the ministry hit people with the Bible, beat them, held them underwater, called them horrible names, humiliated them, and degraded them in front of everybody. And I told my wife, man, if I did half the stuff they showed in that film, I'd pass a law against myself. So I think that the misrepresentation factor in these films is huge. But I will say this, too. None of us is above criticism. I am proud of the years I spent with Exodus. I considered it an honor to work with them. And I still consider it an honor to work with people 
who make a decision similar to one I made by the grace of God back in 1984, and that is, I want to be a disciple of Jesus and submit all parts of my life to him, my sexuality included. I never sought out change. I sought out obedience. That's what we're still doing. But watching this film, and I've watched it myself, Hank, I think that what we have to do is consider the criticisms that they are making and weigh whether or not the evidence backs them up. I do not recall Exodus International ever promising people that they would be free of their temptations, and I believe this film implies that that's what we all did, and that is not true. I think the film implies that we all clung to a psychological Freudian theory on the nature and development of homosexuality. I do not believe that that is broadly true. I think there were some with Exodus who did adopt a neo-Freudian approach, and I think that in some cases that approach was applicable to people, but never was it viewed as having more authority than the Scripture itself. I think that people are portraying this type of ministry. In this film in particular, they're portraying this type of ministry as coercive and as repressive. And that's especially ironic to me because I know in the work I do and the work I've seen other ministries do, people come voluntarily saying, I believe homosexuality is wrong. Will you help me to live my life in accordance with those beliefs? That's not coercive. It's not repressive. And if I may add one more thing here, Hank. My biggest disappointment with this film is that here you have four people, and I knew all of them pretty well. I co-labored with them, and they were also good friends of mine. All of them at one time believed homosexuality is a sin. Now they are all openly gay or lesbian. Many of them are in relationships now, and they're all denouncing what they used to believe in. But not one of them in this film, not one, explained how they came to the conclusion that what they used to believe was a sin is now something sanctioned by God. Not one of them talked about how they interpret Scripture now on the issue. Not one of them talked about how they themselves prayerfully studied the Word and how they concluded that the Word legitimizes what they are doing. They relied only on their experience, by which they said, I prayed for my feelings to go away. They did not go away. Therefore, I have decided that God intended me to have them. Well, good grief. Hank, that's a scary way to determine what God intended, because I can tell you a lot of things I feel every day that I sure don't think God intended me to feel, much less act on. So I think that that is a very faulty foundation, and the title itself, is very misleading. Nobody in Exodus ever said, if you just go home and pray, all your homosexual temptations will go away. If we had said that, we wouldn't have been sponsoring conferences every year to teach people what to do with their sexual desires. You're listening to an excerpt of episode 130 of the Hank Unplugged podcast, Christians in a Cancel Culture with Joe Dallas. To listen to the full episode, please click the link in the description below.